Dear students, welcome to the problem solving session on Lagrange's multiplier method part 3. Those who don't watch the basics on Lagrange's multiplier method and part 2 videos, go to the playlist and watch the videos and come back here, then it will be more useful for you. Let us go into a new problem. Find the volume of the largest rectangular parallel pipe that can be inscribed into an ellipsoid. You should not think something it is out of world, rectangular parallel pipe, ellipsoid etc. We'll see what is this. In our school days, we remember parallelogram. This is our parallelogram. When I try to make the three dimension structure of a parallelogram, I will be getting the parallelo pipe. So, parallelo pipe is nothing but the three dimensional structure of a parallelo gram. But our question says rectangular parallelo pipe. Hope you have guessed what is rectangular parallelo pipe. It's simply a rectangular box. So, parallelo pipe is the three dimension structure of the parallelogram and rectangular parallelo pipe is the three dimensional structure of a rectangle. Hope you understand. Okay, next we have ellipsoid. Before going to ellipsoid, we have to know what is mean by ellipse. So, we study ellipse in our school days x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1, where this a we will say it as the semi major axis and b is the semi minor axis. Now, you would have easily guessed that what is mean by ellipsoid. If I rotate the ellipse in a three dimensional I'll be getting the rugby ball. Okay. So, ellipsoid is the three-dimensional structure of an ellipse. So, whenever we go for three-dimensional structure, we will be getting one more dimension z. So, x square by a square plus y square by b square plus z square by c square equal to 1. This is my ellipsoid. I'll show you the three-dimensional view. When you cut the ellipsoid, you can see the center is 0, 0, 0. And the distance, if this is b, the other side is also b. And if this distance is going to be a here from the center, the other side is also a. So, now you understand what is an ellipsoid. This is the another view. Now, find the volume of the rectangular parallel pipe that can be inscribed into an ellipsoid. That means, I want to cut an ellipsoid and I have to insert a rectangular parallel pipe, a rectangular box inside the ellipsoid. But, the question is clearly given. Find the volume of the largest rectangular parallel pipe. It is not random rectangular box. I have to insert a rectangular box inside a ellipsoid such that its volume should be the largest. So, it's like this. Okay. I am just explaining all the question. You don't want to draw any diagram. Just all these things are for your understanding. When you take a rectangular box, your origin at the corner. But when you insert a rectangular box inside an ellipsoid, ellipsoid has the origin at the center. Just now we see the origin at the center. Usually we take dimensions of the rectangular box as x, y, z. But now this rectangular box is inscribed into an ellipsoid. Now the origin is changing. So, x, y, z cannot be the dimensions for the rectangular box. In this problem, the dimensions of the rectangular box is going to be 2x because we say semi-major axis is a. So, the total length will be a plus a, 2a. Similarly, when a rectangular box is inserted into an ellipsoid, from the middle, if the distance is y, the other side distance is also y. So, the total distance is 2y. So, similarly, when I take the dimensions, it is going to be 2x, 2y and 2z. To explain all these things, I am showing you all the diagram. Therefore, the dimensions of the rectangular box is 2x, 2y, 2z in the case when it is inscribed into an ellipsoid. If it is a normal problem, we will take the dimensions as x, y, z. Okay, now let us go into the problem. Find the volume of the largest rectangular parallel pipe that can be inscribed into an ellipsoid. So, objective is well known to us. The dimensions of the rectangular parallel pipe inscribed into an ellipsoid is going to be 2x, 2y, 2z. Volume is obvious. Length into breadth into height or dimension 1 into dimension 2 into dimension 3. So, therefore, my volume is 2x into 2y into 2z. I am directly going to write it as 8xy 
z that is my equation 1 and f and ellipsoid is directly given to us so i am going to take this as equation 2 now we can easily construct g g is nothing but x square by a square plus y square by b square plus z square by c square minus 1 my f is ready g is ready by lagrange multipliers method the axillary function is capital f is equal to f plus lambda g where lambda is the Lagrangian multiplier. I will write F and G here. Next step 2. We have to find the stationary points as usual capital FX 0, capital FY 0 and capital FZ 0. Let us go into the table. Write the equation and frame the table. So when I differentiate F partially with respect to X, I will be getting 8YZ plus lambda into X square differentiation is 2X divided by a square equal to 0. Similarly, for Fy equal to 0, I will be getting 8xz plus 2 lambda y by b square equal to 0 and for Fz. Now, my aim is to eliminate lambda. So, I am pushing the lambda to the other side. Now, see this problem student. The beauty, always we eliminate lambda or minus lambda. In this problem, I am going to do a little different thing. I want to find the relation. I am going to cut the step 3. I am not going to solve the equation. Now, cancel this 2, 2 and bring the unwanted lambda to the other side. We will be getting 4yz by minus lambda, 4xz by minus lambda and 4xy by minus lambda. Step 3, I want to solve the equation. But remember, my equation 2 is x square by a square plus y square by b square plus z square by c square equal to 1. Now, we can see some pattern here. x by a square, y by b square, z by c square. Suppose, if I multiply x on both sides, y on both sides, z on both sides, I will be getting my right hand side for the requirement of equation 2. And also, you see my left hand side, all are equal, 4xyz by minus lambda. I can easily eliminate my lambda because all my left hand sides are same. I will equate right hand side. So, it is going to be very easy for me. Now, I avoid step 3. From this, I can say the relation directly. So, directly I will get the relation. So, I don't want to solve it. Next, substitution. Take the equation 2. Now, I will convert everything in terms of x. So, for x it is same. For y square by b square, I am going to insert x square by a square. Similarly, for z square by c square, I will insert x square by a square. Now, when you add this, it will become 3x square by a square equal to 1. Therefore, x square is equal to a square by 3. When you take square root, we will be getting plus or minus a by root 3. Now, for x, I am getting plus or minus a by root 3. You would have easily guessed now, for y, it is going to be plus or minus b by root 3. Similarly, for z, we will be getting plus or minus c by root 3. So, it is very obvious. You don't want to solve. So, I can write this similarly. Now, we are dealing with volume measurements. Therefore, I cannot get the negative value. So, I will take the stationary point simply as plus a by root 3 plus b by root 3 plus c by root 3 because dimensions cannot be negative. Now, we know the stationary point. Now, we have to substitute in f. My f is going to be 8 into x, y, z. When I substitute this, I will be getting 8 a, b, c divided by 3 root 3 because root 3 into root 3 is 3. So, the volume of the largest rectangular parallel pipe which can be inscribed is going to be 8 a, b, c divided by 3 root 3. Hope you understand. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and share to your friends. See you in the next video. Bye bye.